time for our next technology presentation. The topic for this session is empower your enterprise with data, AI, and automation. Our speaker for the session is Mr. Sadesh Suresh Nayak, country leader, data, AI, and automation, IBM South Asia. Uh, Mr. Sadesh has more than 22 years of experience in the information technology marketplace with an extensive background in sales, operations, and brand management. He has been with IBM for 20 plus years in various roles in sales and brand management. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please put our hands together for Mr. Sadesh and welcome him up on stage? I think we can do a better job than that. Come on, everybody, sitting behind, sitting in front. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm standing in between you and lunch, so I <laughs> thank you. Uh, as we, as we, I, I think we've, we've, we've heard a lot of speakers since morning talking about the technology foundation, talking about data and AI. Uh, over the next 15 minutes or so, let me give you a perspective of what we as IBM, while, when we work with enterprises like you, uh, what do we what do we see and what do we really bring onto the table? Uh, let's 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 start with uh, let's let's get down to what does it mean to be a data driven organization? In fact, uh, let's take a step back, wherein uh, wherein when we talk about digital transformation, uh, what would we define as the key tenets of digital transformation? I think. The first one, and, and uh, it's like preaching to the choir. Uh, you are the ones who've been leading the charge on some of this in your enterprises uh, over the last few years. Uh, and it's, it's, it's all about aligning the, the objectives, uh, defining the business value of the digital transformation in terms of what do you want to achieve. Uh, you lay that out, you probably start small, uh, get some wins, and then, then start building on it as a much, much larger platform. The whole, whole journey starts with a culture change. It starts with people first. It's about putting people in the right place. At, it's, it's a top-down approach where uh, you, you start with a scenario of having a representation across each of the departments and then trickling it down in terms of what does it mean to the organization, what does it mean to the business. Uh, the next piece, uh, Pankaj, I will request your attention on this. Thank you. Uh, the next piece uh, is, is, is about laying the technology foundation. While you may start small on this journey, it's important that you lay a foundation that, that stays with you through the, through the entire journey, through the next uh, decade uh, or more, uh, through, through the whole, whole journey. How do I put a foundation that can live with me. While I may still start small with my digital transformation uh, steps, it needs to, the foundation needs to be something that can really, really scale in a modular fashion. So that's, that becomes key. Uh, it, as, we, as we lay these steps, we, we, it's important that we put a feedback mechanism and an ability to refine what we do on the ground uh, in terms of the whole, whole transformation journey. And last but not the least, how do we scale and how do we transform? Now, let, let's step back and look at, as we as, we, as, as uh, the uh, BFSI giants in this room, uh, how do we, what are the challenges we, we, we see as we, what are the challenges we see with data? Uh, we, we see uh, heterogeneous environments. Heterogeneous environments has become the norm. Practically every client is, is, is looking at two or three plus public clouds. You have an on-premise, you have multiple public clouds, uh, you have multiple silos of data, different formats, different structures, different environments, different platforms, and all this predicament is furthermore complicated by, by the multi-cloud environment that we are dealing with. Now, what that, that really means is, is the data is really lying siloed across the organization. A lot of it, uh, the operational data Almost 80% almost of the operational data has been hidden, lead, leading to a lot of dark data. Uh, security challenges have heightened over the last few, few years. And, and so as we embark on the journey, 
this is one of the biggest challenges most enterprises, most BFSI leaders face today in the, in the, in the market. Now, let's, let's get on to the next step in terms of laying the technology foundation. Uh, in terms of laying the technology foundation, IBM's approach to this has been around four pillars. Uh, the pillar of predict, automate, modernize, and secure. And, and we'll, we'll cover each of these in terms of how, how we've been working with our enterprise clients through this whole, whole journey. Uh, on the predict pillar, which is the data and AI pillar, uh, the whole data and AI pillar, the approach we've taken with some of our large enterprise clients is a, is a cloud native modular approach. It's an approach that caters to every step of the AI ladder, right from the collect aspects, the data quality aspects, the ETL, the ingest that you do, uh, to the, the organized aspects, the governance elements. Now, as you, as you really scale this across the organization, it, it's important that you have the right policies enforced through the, through the organization, and how do I monitor and enforce those policies? The next step comes in is, is the analyze aspects. Uh, analyze has two elements to it. Uh, one element is, is, is keeping the lights on, uh, which is, which is uh, your, your, your aspects of your MIS. Um, a bank needs an MIS to run his day-to-day -day operations. A report that goes on to the branch manager's desk talking about his, his business that he's done the previous day. It's something that runs the business. So the one aspect is the MIS part of it. The other aspect is the advanced analytics part of it. Now, both, both elements are critical for the bank. How do I run both elements? Uh, what we typically say as the left-hand architecture and the right-hand architecture. You need both to run the, run the organization. And how do I have an architecture that marries both elements? Uh, the other aspect in the analyze phase is, is about uh, explainability. And this is becoming more and more important. RBI has started mandating that anything that you do, the, any models that you put in need to have uh, an explainability uh, factor. You've got to be able to go back and explain why you've done what you've done. And that becomes a whole critical element in all the models that you bring in. Uh, elements of ethical AI, elements of no bias, uh, drift, basically the entire AI life cycle management in your, in your bank, in your organization is what becomes the whole critical aspects, which is the next step of analyze. As you move further, you're now moving into how do I operationalize all of this? How do I infuse all of this into, into the larger organization? And how do I, as I infuse this, how do I create dashboards? How do I create uh, elements that can be consumed by business at, at every level? So that's, that's the entire chain we are talking about. Now, all of this, uh, is, is built on a platform that's cloud native, that gives you the ability to, to create once and deploy it wherever. It could be deployed on-premise, it could be deployed on, a, on an AWS, on a Google Cloud or an Azure. The whole premise is about how do I create an asset uh, that's, that's, that's agnostic uh, to any of the cloud providers. It's cloud agnostic. The, the coming back to the challenge we were talking about, siloed data across multiple siloed, multiple platforms, multiple structures, multiple architectures, um, and, and as a bank, and, and let's take example of a large bank, in fact, in Mumbai, uh, who runs their EDW, um, uh, and, and about 60% uh, of their querying is on that EDW environment. Uh, but they still have 40% that goes in as ad hoc queries. And, and they've deployed almost 24 people uh, who take care of those ad hoc queries. And it, it is a humongous effort. Actually, every ad hoc query, uh, they get down to picking up data manually, bringing it onto the platform, analyzing it, and, and really, uh, by the time it is done, it is, it is, it is seven days, 10 days, and, and data is stale, and, and the whole process stalls. So it's, it's a humongous task. Uh, and a, a technology that's come in, it's, it's not a new technology, but it's, it's been for a couple of years, but it's getting embraced in, a, in a, 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 a lot stronger way now called the data fabric. A data fabric is, is, an, is, is a, connective, a virtual connective tissue that connects all the data endpoints uh, with technologies like federated governance, automation, integration, 
um, activation of metadata. It gives you an ability of making sense of that data without physically moving the data. So this bank where we did this MVP in Mumbai uh, was able to cover 15 plus siloed environments and a few of those environments uh, sitting on the public cloud, AWS, as well as Azure, my ability to create or query across the siloed environment is what it gives you. And, and this is something, I wouldn't say it's, it's about swinging the pendulum from, from the left-hand side to the right-hand, moving from one extreme to the other, but it, it's about finding a middle path on how much do I need on my data warehouse, how much do I, can I, can I create a fabric on, and still the whole aspect is how do I create data as an enterprise asset, my ability to consume the entire data that I have in the organization. And that's, that's what this is, is, is all about. Now, as we move on to the other pillars, the other pillars of automate and modernize, uh, the whole element is about a few sub-pillars, the pillars of digital business automation, where you're, you're, you're trying to digitize all your operations, your ICR, OCR, your intelligent data capture, your trade finance automation, your uh, elements of, of uh, uh, you bringing in your BPM, BRE, your business workflow elements, uh, your RPA elements, all of those elements is what you bring together in the, in, the, in the business automation, the digital business automation pillar. The next pillar, which is the integration pillar, is again a pillar which is very, very critical, and we'll talk about uh, this in a bit. The third one is about running your IT operations. Uh, how do I put my applications on an autopilot? Uh, let's look at the, the, the integration pillar. And we, we spoke about briefly on this in the morning. Uh, if you look at the API banking, uh, API banking or open banking has become integral to, to the whole BFSI story today. Uh, uh, this this started in a big way with with Yono a couple of years back, and now is 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 getting embraced by practically every every bank. Uh, it is about how do I how do I have uh, corporates integrated on an on an API backbone. Uh, in fact, it goes a step further on how do these MSMEs uh, not only do their their banking transactions, but how do they uh, do their own business on this platform is what banks have started getting into. And that is the next leap that's, that's coming on to the digital ecosystem. Now, as this comes in, uh, it brings in a lot of complexities along with it, uh, complexities of security to, to start with, right? You're now creating an API backbone which you're opening out to, uh, uh, to the corporate world, uh, to the MSME world. How do I ensure I have a gateway that actually sits into my DMZ zone? You've got to have an API backbone that's extremely, extremely secure. And that becomes the, the, the whole foundation of playing this entire, entire piece. Of course, this is coupled with a lot of other things uh, that go in within the integration requirements, which is your enterprise service bus, connecting your siloed environments, and so on and so forth. Uh, moving on to the business automation piece, we spoke about this, I'll, I'll just spend a little moment on, on um, a few things we are attempting with, with uh, some of the large players, especially in the insurance segment. Uh, now in the insurance segment, there is something called a straight through processing. Uh, now typically, you, you see a certain level, could be 50%, 60%, varies by each insurance player, uh, in terms of what is the extent of straight through processing. So if you have a yes for all the questions, uh, your risk appetite is low and, and it, it gets into a straight through processing, the policy is issued. Uh, no questions asked. Now, uh, as the whole insurance piece grows to the next level, the question or the work we are trying to do with these insurance companies is, how can I raise my threshold from the current levels of 60% to a 75% in terms of safe straight through processing? And the benefits it will bring you is very, very significant. So when you look at it and try analyzing it, it's not that when it's not through a straight through process, it's not that a policy is not issued. It probably goes through a, a higher uh, risk appetite. It, it goes through multiple levels of, higher levels of approval, maybe a higher premium that goes in. What we're doing with a couple of insurance giants at this point in time is, is, is uh, doing a deep dive, uh, and it's a combination of AI models and process mining 
to see how can I move this threshold of 60% straight through processing to maybe a 70, maybe a 75. In fact, even if we are able to achieve a few percentage points, the quantum of benefit it will bring onto the table is, 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 is substantial. So th this, is, this is something which is underway as we talk with a few large insurance giants. The next piece, which is again a very, very critical piece, and all of us grapple with how we manage our infrastructure uh, and how do we put our applications on an autopilot as we, as we do this. And, and a couple of uh, elements that we as IBM bring onto the table on this. One is uh, an application performance management piece. We are practically the last entrant, and, and which is where when I talk about is, I'm sure some of you have a question mark on uh, app dynamics. Uh, Dynatrace has been around for, for decades now, and, and IBM is now waking up to uh, something called as Instana. The answer is yes, we, we've, been, we've been late to the market. This is an acquisition that IBM made. Uh, but the, the piece that is, is extremely differentiated that we bring onto the table is an ability to do deep tracing. So imagine a bank uh, where you have an UPI environment, and there is an APM that you run. It tells you. Uh, something is wrong with my, my UPI. But that's all it tells you. To go deep dive and figure out what is exactly going wrong is, is still a nightmare. It could take you days to figure that out. A task level tracing, a deep tracing which gets you to the exact point where things are going wrong. In fact, on the IBM stack, it can go down to code level at memory leak level across the entire stack, right from your MQ to your IIB to your API. It can go to the last dot to tell you where it's, it's, it is, is, is the problem and how do you fix it, right? And that is what becomes the differentiating factor. And as we talk, we, we made significant inroads with a couple of banks on, on the Instana platform. The turbonomics piece is, again, an uh, uh, area which is, uh, which is not been there in the industry at all. This is where we move a layer beyond the application performance monitoring. It's called application resource monitoring, uh, resource management. Uh, what you're doing here is, is you're addressing your performance issues for your application real time. So if your application is running out of cash, your ability to provide it memory real time is what your ability to do here is. Uh, you can do this across on-premise, across cloud, uh, on uh, a VM environment, on a container environment. In fact, this has become extremely popular with some of the uh, uh, clients who've moved to cloud. Now, the biggest challenge on cloud is, is the bill shocks that, you, that hit you. The ability to have an extremely optimized environment, which, which does it real time. We've just done this. Uh, in fact, the approach we've, we've been taking on this is, is uh, an approach where we run it in your environment for a period of 21 days to a month actually demonstrate to you what is the kind of saving you see on your cloud environment. Typically, if you have a reasonable size cloud investment and you would you you are certain, and I'll just throw a number. Let's say you spend a million dollar on, on a hyperscaler and you want a scenario to see how can I save uh, a certain amount on that. The approach we take is run this in your environment for a certain period. And so far, all the POCs we've done have shown us in excess of 30% benefit. And, and, and then talk about, if you invest in Turbonomics, what is the kind of return? And it's for your environment. It is not a theoretical BVA. It's a business value add. What do I see? What benefit do I see from my own environment perspective? That's the approach we've started taking. Uh, Works across all the hyperscalers as well as on-premise. Uh, the last element is, is the AI ops piece. It is about how do I do uh, problem determination? How do I do the RCA part? Uh, we do this on a very, very large scale for many, many years with some of the telecom giants. Um, so one of the telecom giants, we run this where we do uh, event monitoring of uh, in excess of 120 million events a day. And I'm talking about India. It is unprecedented by any standards, be it in India or across the globe. So that's that's the piece uh, that we're talking about. Uh, let, me, let me come to what is it that we looking at uh, from a from a next phase of adoption. Uh, one of the pieces, core elements that we we've, we've been seeing is is uh, elements of democratization of democratization of data. Now, 
it is about lowering the center of gravity on how more and more people within the organization can consume data and how do I put all the governance mechanisms, how do I put in uh, all the statutory requirements that are there in place so that I can get, get actually data consumed. Uh, and I'll give you an example, of course, it's not a banking example, but this is an FMCG giant who, with whom we've been working and one of the biggest challenges they faced was the skill gap. While they have very few data scientists on board, the ability to really consume data as you move it down the chain becomes more and more difficult. And the approach we've started taking there is an auto AI approach. So this platform is actually able to see data, look at the patterns, based on that, pick the right algorithm that suits that data, uh, do the feature extraction, do the hyperparameter tuning, converge to, a, to, to an accuracy level, and really give you the starting. I wouldn't say it is a be all end all for, for, for so here this FMCG giant, we, we have about 250 graduate engineering trainees uh, who've spent about a year in, in, in this organization and I'm, I'm, uh, let me spell it out, we're talking about ITC. Uh, as, as they grapple with this data and are able to find insights, the kind of projects they kick, they've kicked off in the last six months we were ourselves amazed on, on, on the kind of value it can bring in. We then moved the needle saying, this is something, why, why just the, the, the FMCG companies, we can do this in banking as well. And we started grappling with banking and we ourselves were pleasantly, pleasantly surprised how the kind of starting points, uh, it, it doesn't become a be all end all, but it gives you a direction on what do I need to refine on, what do I build on, and that, those starting points come out very, very clearly. And that's an approach we've started taking with, with a lot of people. Uh, the next step that we see coming in onto this is, is uh, not just on the auto AI part, it is now moving into the next level of a intelligent dynamic data fabric, uh, which brings in elements of, of uh, auto cataloging, auto privacy, uh, auto querying. Uh, it is about, I don't need to know, figure out where exactly, what's, what's going to be my, be my source to query, but it's, it's for the fabric to figure out the, the right source and, and across the environment I've mapped, uh, how, do I, how do I get the whole auto query going. So it is about how do I really use data to the, to the, to the benefit of the organization and consume data at the lowest possible level within the organization. So on that note, thank you gentlemen. Uh, wonderful talking to you. Looking forward to catching up with you in person. Thank you so much, Mr. Sudesh, for that wonderful presentation. Now, may I request uh, Dr. Ravi Gupta, CEO and Editor-in-Chief, the Banking and Finance Post, and Mr. Shankar Jadhav, Managing Director, BSC Investments and Head, Strategy BSC, to please come up on stage and pre present a memento. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Sudesh Suresh Nayak, country leader, data, AI, and automation, IBM India, South Asia.